Uh, good afternoon. Welcome, everybody, for what is going to be an outstanding session um, on what future, future of finance teams and also uh, working our change uh, and what the world will look like in the future. So I'll start off with the current situation and, and how you're all dealing with it. Uh, there's a lot of talk, I guess, with the finance people that I talk to around, you know, scenario analysis, forecasting, reforecasting it at such high levels. Um, how have you each approached it and what, what we have done differently um, looking back sort of six months ago, if you could go back in time, uh, and how you're sort of seeing the recovery um, in your businesses and, and wider in terms of the recovery from the economic downturn? Are you seeing, you know, VU step recoveries further downside? Uh, Joe, I might, I'm interested in your thoughts. Um, thanks so much, Bo. I think um, from my perspective, you know, generally in finance, you tend to do your kind of quarterly forecasting. Um, this was a very hyper kind of care period where it was really around not just your normal forecasting, but really a range of different scenarios about how extreme it could be to maybe it's only going to have a really small impact. And, and to touch on a point that Rob also mentioned, I think the, you know, the focus on cash flow forecasting became more important and you know being able to get to that granular level of detail about what impact the cash flow could have off the back of COVID became a really important consideration that was definitely a more regular conversation that you would normally be having. I think um, you know in that early stage and if you reflect back on from a learning perspective because all of us ran different scenarios um, you know, one of the reflections of things that I think we did well was really looking at the key levers and value drivers in the business. So what are the key things that really drive the business's activity, their financials, the cash flow, and understanding the sensitivity and scenario analysis around those key drivers, I think was something that we did really well. I think that what we could improve on when looking back is really around narrowing down that that range that we provided. I think we were all a bit nervous about giving a number that we that was wrong about what the impact could be and the flow on impact that we got to ranges that was so broad that it, it probably wasn't helpful from making a decision, right? And I think that, you know, it's a really interesting one because most of us were doing this on the fly. The reality is, we only had the information that was in front of us and it was hard to see what some of the impacts were actually going to be. And I think a couple of things that I, I kind of thought were interesting is early on in March, um, in a company I was working with at that time, um, actually we thought that in, in our export market we were going to hold up really, really well because actually in March what we saw was people were panic buying and therefore it was hard to actually see what the the run rate trend was actually going to be. So March and early April showed this certain trend and then all of a sudden that kind of came off. And so we, we probably got a little bit of a shock because we didn't really necessarily understand what was going to continue to trend and what was actually just a bit of a, a bit of a dip, right? Or a bit of an up that was going to go down again. Um, and I think, you know, the other thing from my perspective was the gov government stimulus packages as that evolved. And as more and more information came out, um, really, um, we're holding up the economy through these um, government stimulus packages. And so actually, some of the impact we originally thought we would see is really, in my view, going to be delayed. And so when we think about the recovery and what that looks like, you know, I'm not a pessimist at all, but I think the reality is the impact on the economy, the impact of what it means for small businesses and the flow on impact for all of us who are running finance teams and are critical on that, you know, is yet to be seen. And and so we continue to forecast out what we believe that is. Um, I think as we do that, Bo, we've just got to continue to really narrow in on, you know, what are those key drivers and those value drivers and not get too broad a range so yeah. that we can make good recommendations um, to our CEOs and to the people that are running the business um, to make sure that, you know, we're giving them the information, but we're giving them really valuable insights as well as just a forecasting kind of model. So true, Joe. Um, that ring, certainly rings true for me. We've got a poll question here as well, folks. So a bit more of a work from home flexibility uh, question. So looking at the future, will your, will your organisation look at flexibility more longer term? What do you expect the future to look like? Um, 
back to full time in the office, uh, half work from home, half office, maybe a few days work from home, or will will work from home continue? Um, particularly for people in Victoria. Joe, interested in your thoughts? Yeah, um, I actually had written down three things that I had problem solving, I think is absolutely critical. Adaptability to change, so people being able to change their mindset or understand that the function needs to evolve and the business needs to evolve, which really leads into what Rob was talking about in terms of continuous improvement. And my third point was really the ability to influence the business. So, you know, to Rob's point on business partnering, you know, having the capability in the team to be able to actually drive and influence the business's decision making is kind of critical. So those are the kind of key items that I have though. So stay stay with me, Joe. I've got another question for you. <laughs> while while um while I'm about to do that, we've got a a third poll just on flexibility, which uh, from a flexibility perspective, how can leaders create flexibility for team members during lockdown? So I think Joe just touched on it earlier around giving extra time or days off, meetings only in set hours. Um, so what's the what's the preference there? Thank you. So Joe, while I've got you um, with the current situation and investment in business and transformation has definitely taken a, a hit and a lot of businesses are swung in a survival mode. Mm. Uh, May you give us some insight into your current transformation status and investment profile and focus, and to what what the future looks like from a technology perspective. Uh, yeah. Interesting yeah. in your thoughts. I know there's a lot of big projects on at the yeah. moment where you are. <laughs> yeah, no, it's good. Um, I I think you know I break the project question probably into two elements, which is, um, you know. I believe that finance needs to be very heavily involved in making sure that the business are making good prioritisation decisions about the whole project portfolio that an organisation is trying to do. Um, so I, you know, most companies at the moment are trying to save cash um, and really they're trying to make sure that they're focusing on, on the things that matter. So it's really been for us a pivot or a review of what we're actually doing and what are the elements that are critical. And in some cases, it's new projects and we're pausing old projects. And in some cases, it's accelerating some of the projects that we've got um, under our belt. And I think that actually making sure that you're not just doing what was already in the original budgeted plan, but actually doing that pivot piece. And you know, the finance team are heavily involved, not only in the finance project space, but more broadly to do the business case and analysis to make sure that we're actually making the right decisions. So if we've got X millions of dollars that we want to spend, how do we best spend that money to get the best outcome for the business? And I think that um, it's never been so important to be really clear about what your prioritisation framework is and how that links in to the strategy of the organisation. And, you know, most companies would be in the same boat. It's really about how quickly you pivot and how, and how you make good decisions around investments right now is going to set you up for what it looks like in six to 12 months' time. From a technology perspective, touching on a couple of things that Rob said earlier, um, I'm very um, passionate about the use of data and analytics, um, you know, in finance, but more broadly in the organisation, more than ever, uh, do we really understand our customers and their trends and how they've changed over the last three to four months and what we believe that looks like from a predictive analytics perspective. And I think that the finance team has got a great role in in really understanding the data and analytics and bringing the insight to the business on what that looks like. So, you know, um, you know, most finance teams are focused on, you know, how do we automate some of the processes? What does that look like? What does the data and analytics piece look like? But I think in the current environment, Bo, what you're seeing is an acceleration of a lot of those things, right? Things that maybe it was an 18 month program of work. We don't necessarily have 18 months to do it. And so we have to actually decide which are the most important bits. And I, I do think organisations that come out of the COVID environment, the strongest, are going to be the ones that have used their data and analytics and used some of the technologies to actually help drive great decision making. And so it's an uncertain environment, but leaning into building some kind of view about what it looks like and what it means and how do you prioritise becomes critically important. Bye. Uh -huh. uh -huh.